than in the good segment. So on an average, if I am to compare the balances that has been lent out to the response equals to zero versus the response equals to one, what I see is that the response equal to zero on an average holds a higher balance compared to the response equals to one. And this is another challenge or this is another aspect which shows or which hints at a flawed lending strategy in the previous history. So uh, this shows that yes, the, rest, the bad population or the people with low credit scores holds on an average holds a significant amount of or holds on an average holds a larger value of the balances. So or a, on an average a higher amount of loan has been lent out to these people. So that is what is that has been one of the major challenges in the lending strategy, right? Now we do another analysis, we try to look into the purpose of the loans, right? So the purpose for which the loans were actually taken. So Yes, so this is what we do over here. So we just sort the loan purposes uh, by the values because they are not sorted. And if you want to do a like a reg by these values, then we would need this sort. So basically, what we do is we sort this. So just look into the log. Yes. Next thing that we do over here is so over here uh, it shows so what were the major purposes of taking the loan? So there were uh, five major purposes. One was education, the other was retraining, another was furniture, the other was radio TV, and finally it was for new car and used cars. So let's look into the, like, what I'm trying to look into is the total number of bad rates by the purpose. So what, how has the bad rates been distributed by the products? So what I see is for education loans, there are more, there, there are 50 people who had applied for education loans. And out of them, 22 were people with low credit scores or they were bads. So therefore, I can see there is a 44% bad in this for, for people who are taking education loans. Now, if I look into furniture, again, yes, 32% uh, of a bad rate is observed. For a new car, I get to see around a bad rate of 38%. Uh, for radio TV, it's 22%. Retraining 34% and used car it's 16.5%. So what it seems to me mostly is that uh, for the cars, uh, for the automobile loans, the bad rate, especially with the used cars, the bad rate or the percentage of people with low credit scores has been relatively lower compared to uh, that of education or furniture loans. So. Just one thing, so this, uh, having this granular kind of a purpose variable with so many purposes seems to be, seems to generate too much of information and not much of, uh, you know, we cannot actually extract out very uh, informative aspects for comparison. If we are actually using this granular version of education, furniture, etc. Right? So uh, what I have done is, uh, I had created another data set called uh, the German Bank Data version 2. Now uh, in this data what I have done is for accounts which have if a person has taken loans say for a car or say for used or a new car I have coded it as a vehicle loan. So people who have taken loan for education or retraining I have clubbed these two types of loans under education loans and for and people who have taken loans say for furniture or for radio TV I have clubbed them as a consumption loan. So basically I have clubbed these six uh, purposes of loan into three basic uh, product groups into 
three basic uh, type of loans, so as to say. So this has two advantages. The advantage being that if you look into this first part, there are just 50 accounts out of the 1000 accounts who have taken loan for education. So this base is pretty small. However, if I club education and retraining, so you would see that within retraining there is a total of 152 accounts. So if I club retraining and education as an education loan, the total base of applications that are there would increase and therefore it would give me a clearer and a more aggregate picture of the bad rate or the parcel, uh, uh, the rate of people with low credit scores. So I would get a more clearer and a more average picture of the same. However, if I look into, say similarly if I am looking into furniture, there is 181 accounts and for radio TV there is 280 accounts. So if I plug them together, I get a very larger base, a large base, which actually would give me a very clear picture or a more prominent picture of the aggregate behavior of the bad rate. For this purpose, what I have done is, I have changed uh, or I have like clubbed the data or, or these purposes as a Jarman Bank data version 2, right? So the only difference of this data set with the Jarman Bank data that I have over there is in terms of the purpose variable that the purpose variable is created at a more aggregate level in this particular data set which would actually help us make our uh, idea about the bad rates more clearer. So rather than looking into six different heads, it's better to look into just three groups. So I'll just change this name of the data over here into the stock. I'll change this name of the data to version 2 and I'll do it. So it's purpose, just purpose, right. So now if I have a look into this, I'll just have three uh, particular variables to look into. So the first is a consumption loan. So consumption loans have more or less a default rate or a bad rate of 26%. For education loans, uh, the bad rate is 36%. And for vehicle loans is 31%. So what I get to see is that consumption loans tend to have the lowest uh, bad rate or people with the lowest uh, credit score or the percentage of customer being a bad customer is much lower in the consumption loans than in the education loans. So education loans has the highest chances of having a bad customer, right? Uh, and vehicle loans also has quite a high chances of being uh, like having a bad customer. Now, within the vehicle loans, if you look into it, you would see that the new cars has a greater default rate. So as we saw that this one. So the new car had a 38.38% of uh, bad rate, whereas used cars had only 16%. So the overall bad rate is 31%, but yes, the new cars, of people who took loan for buying new cars were more susceptible to be bad customers. Right, so this is one where we are actually, so that 30% of the bad rate, we looked into that how is exactly that bad rate distributed across the products. Now, uh, a very reason to look into this is, and we would investigate it later down, the question that we might ask at this point of time is, can we use this purpose of loans, can we use a loan purpose as segments in our model? So can I use consumption loans as a separate model segment, education loan as a separate model segment and vehicle loans as a separate model segment and develop three separate models for these three separate products? 
or should I develop just one single model? If the bad rates tend to differ significantly across these three product groups, then will a single model be sufficient to explain all the variations in the three uh, different product types? Or is it that we would require three separate models for them? So this analysis will actually help us or this analysis would be actually addressed in greater details when we go into the segmentation part of it, when we talk about segmentation. So at this stage, so we need to use this, we, we would be extending this result and doing say a mean difference test to understand whether these bad rates are significantly different from each other or not. So that is where the ANOVA analysis comes, comes to play in the later stages. Right. So that is one thing that we had over here, right? Now what we are trying to do is we are trying to look into the fact that, okay, so we have seen the bad rates by the purpose and we have seen that the consumption loans have the highest uh, bad rate, right? So what we would do over here is we would look into the amount concentration. So what has been the concentration of the amounts for the purpose? So say for example, uh, in this consumption loan, there are uh, there is a twenty six percent bad. So, out of the total loans that has been extended in the consumption sector, what percentage of loan lies with the bad accounts, and what percentage of loan lies with the good accounts? And we do it at a product level. So, so I would just do a proc means analysis over here. Yeah, so this is how the values look like. 